Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to do some work on the JK, a little bit of, of pre-work you could call it. So one of my plans is to get a new bumper and winch combination for the JK that just has this big stock monstrosity here that's uh, terrible. But to do that, specifically in the 2012 to 2018 JKs, a lot of times there's one thing that might get in the way. So normally on a stock JK, there'll be a piece of plastic here. If you take that plastic off, you'll see this thing up under it. This is a vacuum pump that helps the braking system uh, build vacuum, I guess, in panic situations or ABS situations. If you buy a bumper that has a winch that's recessed down between the frame rails, then that's going to get in the way. The previous owner of this Jeep did have a winch bumper on here, and you can see... When I bought this Jeep, it had already been modified to uh, fit the winch down in there. And they had already relocated this. Well, when he took all that off, they relocated it back to, uh, to the original location. Which wouldn't be that big of a deal, except for the fact that they had already modified this bracket. And it is now damaged. And this is not as high as it should be. It's missing one of the bolts. Now, this vacuum pump is pretty simple. It has a vacuum line. It has a scavenge line. And it should have an electrical connector. And that's about it. It can really go anywhere as long as you fit it somewhere. So a while back, um, a lot of companies came out with pretty much the exact same design of relocating this particular vacuum pump. Now, I wasn't originally going to install a, uh, a kit for this until I got the bumper. But uh, I found a kit on Amazon Warehouse deal for like 10 bucks, And so I went ahead and bought it. This is EAG kit, uh, which generally means that it's imported probably straight from China or India but uh, either way uh, it's so such a simple kit that you don't really have to worry about it so the first thing we have is a bracket this is gonna be the bracket for the pump and this is gonna be relocated into the engine bay which we'll show in just a second it came with some wire loom and some new bolts some wires and there should be some connectors in there as well since the vacuum lines come from the engine on this side on the driver's side down underneath the computer here uh, that's where they relocate the pump and you can see this bracket's designed to set right here on these two bolts. Now, the first thing we'll do is remove these two bolts and go ahead and mount the bracket before I start messing with the pump. Guys, the assumption is that your Jeep will not already have a jacked up bracket down here. And so <clears throat> you'll have two bolts to remove right here. Uh, I'm going to remove that one over there. FYI, the ones we just removed was a 10 millimeter. I believe that's a 10 millimeter as well. Now that the pump's loose, I'm going to disconnect it. So you can see I pried the electrical connector out of this bracket with just a flat tip screwdriver. There should be, I guess that's like a scavenge line there that just pulls off straight away. And then this one, you can see there's a little safety clip that needs to be pulled back and then it should unplug too. See how I pulled the green clip back? It just unplugged. The electrical connector has a simple push push holder, push lock, whatever the hell you want to call it. And then the return line just pulls right off. Now I've got my pump. The next thing I want to do is to pull these vacuum lines back because they're actually going to get cut and 
re-lengthened. So let's find where they go. Is this the vacuum lines? I think. I think this is going to be the vacuum line right here. Going around that. Looks like there's a clip down on the fender that is holding them. Let me pop that out real quick. Yep, I do see a clip right there on the front grill support, I guess that is. All right, that's out. Once this is fished back up through here, you can kind of see it is now super long compared to where it needs to be. It really only needs to go to right here. You'll see a couple junctions where you can actually probably splice in, but it looks like I'll actually probably just cut this down here somewhere and move this check valve over to here. I may even be able to take this completely out. Let's see if I can. So that is going to be the easiest way remove this section from the check uh from the check valve forward off of the end of the original hose take the original hose there should be a junction right around here uh, go ahead and take that out and then i'll just push this check valve right back in there and then you can see that's going to be almost the perfect length so i have run into a problem so i'm going to go ahead and mount this uh canister or this pump and i am running into a problem because i'm missing that other isolator that was cut off this jeep prior to i don't have one i'm gonna to have to order one and this obviously isn't going to bolt up properly the way this is designed for that isolator. So I'm going to have to figure out something. So what I did was I cut off a section of the original vacuum hose. I'm going to put on the top as an isolator for under here, like that one is. And I cut off a section for the bottom. Now the bolts will go through this hole, through these pieces of rubber and that bracket. And then all I need to do is go find me a, a washer that will go on the bottom so that when I start tightening it up, it'll squish these a little bit and it'll create a rubber isolator. I am going to order one, but hey, got to get it done today. I don't have a way to go get one right now. I'm not going to tighten that up yet until I lengthen these lines. So guys, it's time to run the electrical now. And you can do one of two things. You can either cut up here and have the plug be at the bottom or you can have the plug be up here there's gonna be a splice here and a splice down there anyway so it doesn't matter in order to keep that side of the of the wiring harness completely intact i'm going to cut actually from the pump because if i ever have to replace the pump i can get it it'll come with a new plug if i cut the wiring harness off the jeep that's modifying the wiring harness on the jeep i'd rather modify it on a replaceable part than something that's not replaceable so i'm gonna cut up here uh, I'll splice in, I'll run those wires, which I already have loomed right here, down to the bottom. I just got to remember that the two colors that come out of the plug, I think that's what green and white, whatever I plug them into up here, which obviously green to black, white to white, uh, will need to be the same down there when I move this other end of the plug down there. So guys, I'm done splicing on this end. The one complaint about this kit is the cheap ass connectors they use. If you have some nice heat shrink connectors, uh, I would replace those but for the price i mean i get it they have to cut corner somewhere that's definitely where they cut the corner at i cut off a piece of loom from the vacuum line that i'm going to tape onto onto there to protect that so there'll be tape uh, wrapping that up i'm going to leave this plugged in or, or uh, clipped in to the original connector down there for now until i get another bumper and then i'll i'll zip tie it up you can see i've got extra wire loom there's extra loom up here too so I'm going to go ahead and get it all in place, zip tie it together, make sure that's not contacting any type of moving parts or anything that's going to get hot. And I'll go ahead and cut this. I'll probably cut about that much off. Splice in the other connectors, white to white, black to actually red. I think I said green earlier. That's actually red. Plug the vacuum line back in, plug the scavenge line back in or whatever that's called, the exhaust line, whatever it is. Um, and then uh, we should be ready to go. We'll see if we have any check engine lights. So let me start buttoning that up and I'll show you what it looks like at the end. As I got this all wired up, I've got my vacuum line back in. I've got my plug wired into the loom that I ran. I ran that loom behind this bracket right here that holds the computer in the water bottle. Ran it behind there. 
and then straight down away from everything else down to its original location where i spliced in the other end of the connector and plugged it in kept it in its original location which will get changed when i get a uh, bumper already cranked up the jeep the jeep shows no check engine lights had good brake pressure uh, i still need to drive it to make sure uh, under a panic stop that it, you know everything works uh, but you can see everything's out of the way uh, let me tighten this up i'll give you the last overview of it i'll show you what tools i used and uh, we'll be done so here it is all mounted up you can see i swapped it up to the top the instructions show it being at the top uh, you can see my makeshift isolators are in there and fine <clears throat> the reason i originally had it on the bottom is because these little wings right here almost make contact with the bracket and i didn't want to send any extra vibrations through to the fenders because my isolators are a little wore out but i went ahead and mounted it like the directions just so that it'd be clear and then i will uh, I've, I've got some new isolators ordered because these are kind of wore out and of course that one's homemade so but that's what it looks like all wired up ready to roll here's the tools i used i used a 10 millimeter deep well 10 millimeter standard I use a ratchet, I use a drill driver, you don't have to have the drill driver, I use a 10 millimeter wrench. I use some wire strippers, I use some dikes to, uh, those are some really crusty dikes, but I use some dikes to uh, really squeeze the connectors well. I use my pocket knife because I always use my pocket knife. And I use some black tape. Everything else I used uh, came from either the kit and or uh, the original system. Guys, by far the hardest part of this is just simply rerunning that wire and that wasn't hard at all probably takes about if you were set up ready to roll you had everything available uh didn't have to look around for tools or anything it might take you about 30 minutes to do this job hopefully this convinces you that you don't have to hire someone to simply put a front bumper on or a winch you can do it yourself you just have to do some small things like relocating uh, that vacuum pump if you want to be a, a winch that's uh, recessed into the frame rail which i'm probably going to do so guys, if the video helped you, please hit like, please hit subscribe. I will see y'all later.